So well, this video is going to be on line integrals. And what we mean by line integrals is before, as you've been seeing, we've been integrating over regions like the double integral or over solids like uh, uh, the triple integral. Now we're going to actually integrate over a line. So this is not arc length. In fact, uh, one can calculate arc lengths just like areas with double integrals and volumes with triple integrals. But and here you can cal calculate the arc length. But this is not the arc length that we're in fact going to be looking at. What we're going to what we want to say is that we want to integrate this function f of x y, okay, uh, along some smooth curve c. Now that uh, the word smooth requires some uh, basic uh, understanding, uh, which we will now try to explain. Uh, one sec now. So before we get to line integrals, we need to talk about some ideas about this. Um, this curve C, um, which is this is a path integral, also referred to as a path integral, as well as a line integral. So we need to uh, get some terms, first of all, sorted out. The first of these is the orientation. So a curve C, uh, C is oriented, um, means it has direction. And there's two ideas, uh, positive orientation and negative orientation, which we will revisit later, as they're not useful here at the moment anyway. We will look at them later. So uh, what I mean by this is, of course, here's an example. So there's a starting point, x0, y0, for instance, z0, and an end point, say x1, y1, and z1. So in theory, if something has a start and end point, obviously it's got a direction. So this is the orientation of this curve. Okay, so it can happen in any kind of curve, which could be oriented in any particular uh, way. So that's uh, C is oriented uh, means that. Next idea is of smoothness. So a curve is smooth if it has two properties. Um, number one, so a curve C is smooth if so it can if C can be expressed parametrically. So um, in terms of, for instance, x t, y t, z t, okay? And the second condition is that if it can be expressed, they're linked together, so if it can be expressed parametrically, then, then of course, x dash uh, t squared plus y dash t squared plus z dash t squared um, cannot be zero cannot be identically zero. So if this is zero, then of course it is not smooth. But if it is, uh, then of course it is um, smooth, that is. Now, important things to realize, of course, this automatically means that these three x, t, y, t, and z, t functions must be continuous and they must have continuous first uh, derivatives. And then, of course, we can only then calculate this and that should be not zero. If it's non-zero, then we say it is a uh, smooth curve. Now in a similar way this applies also there's a similar thing that can be applied in 2D and that would mean that that this uh, x dash t squared plus y dash t squared be not zero and in that case of course there is no z. So that's just the 2D version of it. Alright so that's smoothness. Let's move further. So now for any function f of x y z we are in uh, if it is positive if it is continuous in some region d okay which contains um, uh, contains the path or the the curve C, and C of course is uh, is a smooth curve. C is smooth. Then um, obviously this means that we can parametrize it as this, um, and of course uh, with with some limited t between a and b. Okay, um, in that case the integral the line integral f of x y z. Uh, ds is that's the param that's the representation of it and the practically how we calculate it is we calculate by converting of course all of these um, uh, using uh, the parametrization and of course then we have this piece here and you'll see why this is important the condition of smoothness because otherwise you can't actually compute this would just be zero and if this is zero then the entire integral disappears. So therefore, it's not possible to calculate it. So hopefully, that will make sense now. So this now is a practical way to calculate um, any line integral. And of course, there is a 2D version of this, which is, is this. 
All right. So let's uh, now we're in a position to look at some examples. So here's an example. Uh, we have to calculate y sine z ds, uh, this line integral. Um, where x is cos t, y is sine t, and z is t. In case you're wondering what this ds is, it is, of course, um, s is the um, uh, arc length. So this is with respect to the arc length, in fact, is always what we're calculating. So um, uh, the x dash uh, plus y dash plus z dash, all squares, um, respective squares, under the root is, in fact, the dt is the ds equivalent. So anyway. Uh, you would have seen that before in line integration when we were calculating arc lengths, in fact. Uh, so uh, here, uh, to continue, we will, of course, move to the integral with um, our limits here of t, which is 0 to 2 pi, and y is sine t. Then we have this uh, multiplied by sine t as well. Okay, and then we'll, have, of course, have to calculate. If I can just go back here, we have to calculate... Um, this uh, whole piece and I'll require these derivatives and the squares of these derivatives so so now let's come back to our example so here that means of course um, x dash is minus sine t y dash is cos t and z dash is 1 so this means that <clears throat> the square root becomes sine squared t plus cos squared t plus 1 and dt so that's just going to boil down to sine squared t plus cos squared t is 1 so we have a square root 2 which we can throw out so we're left with just sine squared t here dt that's a rather simple integral uh, to calculate and that turns out to be equal to um, root 2 over 2 into uh, t minus half sine 2t from 0 to 2 pi, which actually works out as square root 2 pi. So that's our answer. OK, so now we'll look at some different types of line integrals that are also possible. Um, it is possible sometimes to look for a line integral, which is, in fact, um, a dx here. So it's along a particular component in fact, or the the integral uh, with respect to x of that line integral. And similarly, of course, you can have y and so on. Now, practically how this is done is we have a to b, and we have our parameterization. C, uh, of course, it still has the same requirements. It must be smooth. Uh, but the only difference now is that here, instead of that entire uh, square root, we simply have this. And in the, in the same way, one can also calculate f x y z d y, and that will of course be this. And similarly, uh, we can also do d z, and this can be done along the same curve c. By the way, all these, all this information can be cal computed, um, of course, uh, for the same curve along the same path. One can calculate uh, these different. Now, of course, if this is possible, then clearly another very interesting thing that, that can happen is that we could, we could actually calculate, for instance, different functions of x, y, z, but pdx plus qdy plus rdz, for instance. So we can calculate this, uh, these types of line integrals as well. And this is a, a different notation that you need to get familiar with, where we can actually have all the integrals together. So a sum of these integrals, for instance, as I have here, uh, and these functions can be different as well. So, so that's why I've used P, Q, and R. They don't have to be the same function. So a lot of these combinations are possible, and one can, can calculate line integrals um, like this. They would, this would all require the same parameterization. And of course, instead of dx, as I've I said, x dash dt, y, dy would be y dash dt, and so um, here we have, this is another example uh, where we want to calculate this. So the segments uh, C1 and C2 here as given 2, 0, 0, 3, 4, 5, and 3, 4, 5 to th uh, 3, 4, 0. Uh, so in order to do this, we'll have to first parameterize. So we need to see what curve C actually is. 
And the usual way to do this, if you remember your parameterization, is the starting point uh, 200 zero, zero. will multiply that by 1 minus t. Uh, and then we'll multiply t by the end point, which is 3, 4, 5. Okay, and that will give us, in fact, when we add them, uh, combine them together, it gives us 2 plus t, uh, 4t, and 5t. Now what will happen is you can check yourself. Uh, we have to see, um, you know, this is, the curve is this way uh, with t between 0 and 1. Now it's easiest to do this. Now if you see when t is 0, you'll get 2, 0, 0, which is the starting point. And when t is 1, um, you'll get uh, 3, 4, and 5, which is the end point. So this is how we parameterize. So in other words, it means that, of course, x is 2 plus t, y is 4t, and z is 5t, okay? So, uh, or in parametric form, uh, that, that with t, of course, as I said, between 0 and 1. Now that we have the parametrization, we can continue to solve these um, integrals. Um, uh, but, of course, this is just the over c1. Then we have c2 as well, which we will do in a... Uh, and I'll show you in that in a second. Uh, but let's just do the first one. So this will be along C1, uh, the integral y dx plus z dy plus x dz will become, in fact, the integral from 0 to 1. Okay, and uh, it's going to be y. Uh, y is 40. Okay, and of course, uh, dx. So dx means x dash which means uh, the derivative, uh, so I'll write these here if you like, so x dash is 1, y dash is 4, and z dash is 5. So this one is x dash, so it'll be multiplied by 1, and of course dt, and then we'll have plus, um, the next uh, bit is z, and z is 5t, 5t, and then you have, uh, this is derivative of dy, so we're looking at y dash, which is 4 dt, and the last one then uh, is um, x, and x is 2 plus t, so we have 2 plus t, and then we have, of course, uh, dz, dz means z dash, which is 5, and then dt. So I'll boil down to this, which then turns out to be equal to, in fact, um, 24.5. Now in the same way we'll do the second um, uh, uh, line segment C2 and again for C2 as we did before so a quick revision for you as to how to do this is 1 minus t times the starting point which is 3 4 5 in this case plus t times the end point which is 3 4 0. This is for line segments please remember that and that basically means uh, that becomes, in fact, uh, uh, 3, 4, 5 minus 5t. And we proceed in the same way. Parametrization is that, which means x dash is 0, y dash is 0, z dash is minus 5. So our integral over c2 of y dx, so that integral is going to now become... And of course here, uh, sorry, I forgot, t is between 0 and 1 again. Okay, and so this is 0 to 1. And then we have y dx. y is 4. And dx means x dash, which is 0. So that will all be gone. Plus we'll have the second one, z dy. z is minus 5. And dy would be y dash, which is also 0 dt. So that will be gone. And plus we have the last one. So it's um, uh, x times, this last one is going to be x, which is uh, 3 times, um, then of course a dt, uh, sorry, z dash, which is uh, minus 5 dt. So we end up with uh, just minus the integral. Okay, this integral will become just the integral from 0 to 1 of minus 15 dt, which turns out to be just uh, minus 15, of course. Okay, so we add the two, 
and of course the integral over all c of y dx plus z dy plus uh, x dz turns out to be uh, the two we, we've calculated 24.5 earlier minus uh, 15 that's the sum of the two but anyway the one is negative so therefore the result is 9.5 and that